improvement in food resources plants and animals are major sources of food for us we obtain most of the food from agriculture and animal husbandry india has more than a billion people and we need a lot of grain over 250 million tons each year to feed everyone since we can't increase the farmland much the key is to make farming and raising animals more efficient the green and white revolutions helped make more food and milk but they also used up a lot of nature possibly causing harm for a sustainable development in agriculture we should follow methods like mixed farming this means combining different types of farming like growing crops together and integrating with livestock poultry fisheries or beekeeping this mix of activities can help make your livelihood more stable and sustainable improvement in crop yields crops are of different types cereal crops pulses crops vegetable and fruit crops cereals provide us carbohydrates for energy requirement pulses and nuts provide us with protein and oil seeds provide us with necessary fats vegetables spices and fruits provide a range of vitamins and minerals crops provide us the necessary materials for our energy and growth requirements due to a constant population growth the demand for food production is increasing day by day to meet this demand new methods and strategies are applied in agriculture to increase the crop production in india there has been a four times increase in the production of food grains from 1952 to 2010 with only 25% increase in the cultivable land area this is due to the best practices that are followed in farming these best practices are categorized into three groups crop variety improvement crop production improvement crop protection management one crop variety improvement crop variety improvement means developing new varieties using special methods and techniques to make crops better like making them to give more produce making them resistant to diseases and helping them grow well in different environments let us see different purposes for the crop variety improvement in detail one higher yield to get more produce from the same area of land two improved quality good quality products have high demand in the markets for example baking quality is important in wheat protein quality in pulses oil quality in oil seeds and preserving quality in fruits and vegetables so the variety with these qualities are more profitable to the farmers biotic and abiotic resistance biotic factors like diseases insects and nematodes decreases the crop production and abiotic factors like drought salinity water logging heat cold and frost causes bad plant growth hence the crop produce is reduced so developing varieties that are resistant to these problems can improve crop production change in maturity duration if the duration of the crop from sowing to harvesting is shorter then it is called an economical variety because such short durations allow farmers to grow multiple rounds of crops in a year short duration also reduces the cost of crop production wider adaptability creating crop varieties that can adjust and grow well in many different places helps to keep the amount of food steady no matter the weather or environment if one variety can be grown under different climatic conditions in different areas same type of produce can be produced in a large quantity in a single go desirable ergonomic characteristics fodder crops are better when they are tall and have many branches cereals like wheat and rice are better when they are short means dwarf because they use fewer nutrients to grow creating plant varieties with these good qualities helps increase productivity these are the factors for the crop variety improvement 
but how are these varieties developed new varieties of crops are developed or selected by hybridization and genetic modification methods hybridization technique crossing genetically two dissimilar plants to get a new variety with desired traits is called hybridization types of hybridization there are three types of hybridization one intervarietal means crossing between two different varieties two interspecific this means crossing between two different species of the same genus three intergeneric this is crossing between two different genera now let us see genetic modification genetic modification means introducing genes for desired characteristics in plants by genetic engineering techniques it results in genetically modified crops this new variety of crops gives good results when farmers use good quality seeds and follow good agricultural practices crop production improvement crop production practices in india are of three types one no cost production farmers practicing no cost production often rely on traditional farming methods using saved seeds organic manure from their own resources and minimal or no chemical inputs two low cost production farmers adopting low cost production methods may use improved seeds basic fertilizers and pesticides judiciously three high cost production farmers adopting high cost production aim to maximize yields and returns by using genetically modified seeds high doses of fertilizers pesticides and sophisticated machinery crop production improvement is dependent on three factors one nutrient supply to the crops two irrigation and three cropping patterns nutrients plants need these 16 nutrients for their proper growth and development out of these 16 carbon oxygen and hydrogen are supplied by the air and water plants have to get the remaining 13 nutrients from the soil among these 13 these 6 are macronutrients that means they are needed in large quantity by the plants and these 7 are micronutrients that means they are required by the plants in small quantity if the soil lack these nutrients it impacts essential processes of plants like growth reproduction and their ability to resist diseases is affected boosting soil fertility by adding manure and fertilizers in the right amounts can enhance crop yield manure manure is like a natural soil booster made from animal waste and plant leftovers it is created by letting animal excrement and plant waste decompose when we add manure to the soil it brings in nutrients and organic matter making the soil better for plants to grow the organic matter in manure changes the soil more productive in sandy soil it helps to hold more water and in clay soil it improves the drainage of water and it prevents the water logging using manure is the smart way to recycle farm waste and protect the environment from too many artificial fertilizers manure is of two types one compost and vermicompost two green manure compost decomposing farm waste like cow dung vegetable scraps and other materials in pits producing nutrient rich compost enhancing the soil fertility and the second one vermicompost earthworms are used in the decomposition of plant and animal waste to create vermicompost it is a nutrient enriched organic material that speeds up the growth of plants two green manure green manure involves growing plants like sun hemp or gar before planting crop seeds and then plowing these plants into the soil as mulch this process transforms the green plants into beneficial green manure enriching the soil with nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers fertilizers are plant nutrients made for plants providing them with nitrogen phosphorus and potassium used to help plants grow well developing healthy leaves branches and flowers and contributing to higher yields 
in high cost farming fertilizers need to be used carefully considering the right amount timing and precautions to avoid the problems excessive irrigation can wash away the fertilizers not letting plants use them fully causing water pollution using fertilizers too much in one place can harm the soil because it does not replace the organic matter it hurts the tiny living things in the soil using manure alongside fertilizers helps keep the soil healthy in long run while fertilizers give quick benefits thinking about long term benefits like using manure is important for keeping the soil healthy and getting the best crops organic farming it is a farming method that uses very few or no chemicals like fertilizers herbicides and pesticides it relies heavily on natural sources like organic manure recycled farm waste and bio agents like blue green algae as bio fertilizers this farming uses natural substances such as neem leaves or turmeric for grain storage and to control the pests instead of chemical pesticides irrigation irrigation is the artificial supply of water to the soil through various systems like tubes pumps and sprays in most parts of india crops mainly depend on rainfall and successful farming relies on timely and sufficient monsoons lack of rain can lead to a crop failure to improve crop yields it is crucial to provide water to crops when they need it during their growing season this is especially important in areas where rain is not reliable to overcome the dependence on rain efforts are made to bring more farm land under irrigation ensuring a more reliable water supply for crops india has various water sources and a changing climate different irrigation systems such as wells canals rivers and tanks are used based on the available water resources Farmers use different methods to bring water to their fields depending on what water sources are around like digging wells diverting water through canals or using water from rivers and tanks wells wells come in two types dug wells and tube wells dug wells collect water from closer layers while tube wells reach deeper layers pumps lift water from these wells for forming canals canals are like extensive water pathways they get water from reservoirs or rivers the main canal splits into smaller ones reaching fields to provide water for crops river lift systems in places where canal water is not enough a lift system is used water is directly taken from the river to supporting irrigation in nearby areas tanks are small storage areas that gather rainwater they store water from small catchment areas and are used to provide extra water for farming new efforts to get more water from farming include collecting rainwater and managing entire watershed areas this means constructing small dams that keep rainwater in one place and raising the level of groundwater the dams also prevent rainwater from running off and helps to stop soil erosion cropping patterns mixed cropping growing two or more crops at the same time on one piece of land like wheat with gram or mustard with groundnut is called mixed cropping this lowers the risk and provides a backup if one crop fails intercropping growing two or more crops on the same field in a pattern such as soya bean with maize or finger millet with cowpea is called intercropping this helps use nutrients better prevent pests and improves overall crop returns crop rotation growing different crops in a planned order on the same land is called crop rotation depending on the time and water availability different crops are chosen for each cycle proper rotation allows growing two or three crops in a year for good harvests crop protection management weeds pests and diseases crops often face problems from unwanted plants which are called as weeds and bugs and diseases if not controlled on time they can damage the crops causing significant losses weeds like xanthium parthenium and cyperneus rotundus compete with crops for nutrients space 
and light and hinders the crop growth. Early weed removal is crucial for a good harvest. Insects harm crops by cutting roots, stems and leaves, sucking cell sap or boring into stems and fruits, affecting the crop health and reducing the yields. Diseases caused by bacteria, fungi and viruses can be present in the soil, water and air impacting the plant's health. Control Methods Various methods and chemicals like herbicides, insecticides and fungicides helps to control weeds, pests and diseases. However, excessive use can harm the environment and other species also. Mechanical Weed Removal Using tools physically to remove weeds from fields is another method of weed control. Preventive measures Proper seedbed preparation, timely sowing, intercropping and crop rotation are preventive measures against weeds. Summer ploughing and using resistant plant varieties helps prevent pests. Excessive use of chemicals for control can be harmful to plants, animals and the environment and it causes pollution. Storage of grains Agricultural produce can face high losses during storage due to living factors like insects, rodents, fungi, mites and bacteria contribute to quality degradation, weight loss, poor germination and discoloration of the produce. And it also makes the produce less marketable. Non-living factors such as inappropriate moisture and temperatures in storage also leads to quality issues and losses. To prevent storage losses, practices like thorough cleaning before storage, proper drying in sunlight and in shade and fumigation with pest killing chemicals are used. Animal Husbandry Scientific management of animal livestock involves feeding, breeding and disease control is called animal husbandry. It includes cattle, goats, sheep, poultry and fish farming. Due to a rise in population and improved living standards, the demand for milk, eggs and meat is also increased. Cattle farming Cattle are raised for two reasons, to get milk and for helping with farm work like ploughing, water and carrying things. Indian Cattle Types In India, we have two main types of cattle. One, cows, Bos indicus and buffaloes, Bos bubales. Cows that give milk are called milch animals and those which are used for farm work are called draught animals. How much milk a cow produces? It depends on how long it can produce milk after having a calf. To get more milk, we can make this period longer. Desi and foreign varieties Some foreign breeds like Jersey, Brown Swiss are chosen for longer milk production periods, while local breeds like Red Sindhi, Sahiwal are strong and resistant to diseases. Combining these desi and foreign varieties through cross-breeding can give us cows with both the qualities. Cows and buffaloes need clean spaces and shelter for humane farming, ensuring their health and producing clean milk. Regular cleaning and shelter Animals need regular brushing to remove dirt and loose hair. They should stay in well-ventilated sheds that protect them from weather with a sloping floor for cleanliness. Food Requirements Dairy animals have two food needs, one for basic health and one for milk production during lactation. Their diet includes roughage, means fiber and concentrates with high protein and nutrients. Cattle require a well-balanced diet with all nutrients in right proportions. Micronutrient-rich additives can enhance their health and milk production. Disease Prevention if an animal feeds regularly and maintains a normal posture, it is in healthy condition. Sometimes cattle face various diseases that not only cause harm but also reduce milk production. Vaccinations help prevent diseases caused by parasites, bacteria and viruses. Poultry farming Poultry farming is for eggs and chicken meat. So special breeds are created for laying eggs which are called as layers and producing meat which are called as broilers. Cross breeding between Indian variety like Asil and foreign variety like Leghorn helps to create new varieties with specific traits. 
the expected traits in the new varieties of chicken are more and better quality chicks, dwarf broiler parents for efficient commercial chick production, and ability to handle summer heat, low maintenance needs, small egg laying birds which feed on cheap diets made from agricultural byproducts. Egg and broiler production. Broiler chickens are given vitamin rich supplementary food to promote growth and feed efficiency for meat production. Attention is given to preventing mortality and maintaining feathering and carcass quality in broilers. Effective poultry management practices are crucial including maintaining temperature, hygiene and disease prevention. Housing, nutrition and environmental needs differ between broilers and egg layers. Broiler diets consist of protein rich and fat adequate rations with high levels of vitamin A and K. Poultry diseases can result from viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites and nutritional deficiencies. Proper cleaning, sanitation and regular disinfectant spraying are necessary to prevent diseases in poultry. Vaccination is essential to prevent infectious diseases and minimize poultry losses during outbreaks. Fish Production Fish is a low-cost protein source for our meals, coming from both finned fish and shellfish like prawns and mollusks. Fish can live in either seawater or freshwater from rivers and ponds, allowing fish in both marine and freshwater environments. Fish can be obtained in two ways. One, capture fishing from natural sources and fish farming known as culture fishery. Capture fishing involves catching fish from the wild, while fish farming involves raising fish in controlled environments. So whether it is fishing in the ocean or growing the fish in the ponds, both methods contribute to our fish supply for food. Marine Fishes India has a long coastline of 7,500 km and deep seas beyond it providing marine fishery resources. Fish captured from sea. Popular marine fish types in India include pomfret, mackerel, tuna, sardines and bombeda caught using various nets from fishing boats. To increase fish yields, technology like satellites and eco sounders help locate large fish schools in the open sea. Fish formed in seawater. Some valuable marine fish are also formed in seawater, including finned fishes, like mullets, betki and pearl spots as well as shellfish like prawns, mussels and oysters. Oysters are also cultivated for making pearls. To meet the growing demand for fish and due to declining fish stocks, there is a practice called mariculture is developed where certain marine species are cultured in controlled environments. Inland fisheries Freshwater resources like canals, ponds, reservoirs and rivers are important for fishing. Brackish water areas where seawater and freshwater mix such as estuaries and lagoons are also good for places for fishing. Although people fish in these inland water bodies, the amount of fish caught is not very high. Most of the fish we get from these places is through a method called aquaculture. In fish farming, sometimes fish are grown together with rice crops in paddy fields. More advanced fish farming is done using a system called composite fish culture. In composite fish culture, different types of fishes are put together in a single pond. Each type of fish eats different things so they don't compete for food. This helps to use all the available food in the pond and increases the amount of fish that can be caught. One issue in fish farming is that some fish only lay eggs during the rainy season. Also, when we collect the fish eggs from the wild, they might get mixed with eggs of other species. This can be a problem in fish farming because we want pure fish eggs for farming. To solve this, scientists have figured out ways to make fishes breed in ponds using hormones. This ensures that we get pure fish eggs in the right amounts helping for fish farming. Beekeeping People use honey a lot. So beekeeping which is raising bees to make honey has become a kind of farming. Beekeeping doesn't need a lot of money. So farmers do it to earn extra income. Besides honey, the hives where bees live also provide wax which is used in medicines. There are different types of bees used for making honey like the Indian bee 
rock bee and little bee italian bees are preferred for making honey commercially because they collect a lot of honey and they are stingless they stay in their hives for a longer time and they reproduce well to make honey on a larger scale people create places called bee farms or apiaries the quality and taste of honey depends on the flowers that the bees visit for nectar and pollen different flowers make honey taste different this is all about improvement in food resources Thank <music> you.